it started with a mountain bike. Yeah. I walked around campus for a little while before deciding that riding a bike would be more fun. So I went to the bike shop and I asked for a beach cruiser. And I kid you not, the guy laughed at me. Worked out for him because I bought a bunch of gear. Worked out for me because I started exercising again. Biking was perfect. It was aerobic exercise. And it was playful. It reminded me of being a kid and riding my bike around the neighborhood. And there were so many other directions I could go from there. When I first got into the weight room again, I did exactly what the internet told me to do, which was body build. So I learned about compound lifts and I did some curls and accessory stuff. The goal is up 15 pounds by August of this year. Eating as many calories as possible, eating as clean as possible, but I was ready to take another step. YouTube starts suggesting videos about CrossFit and I see these athletes and they're insane and they're doing all these really fun, crazy things that I had been missing out on. It changed everything. Everything I had just learned got flipped on its head. Instead of trying to look good, it was about trying to be good. What are the things that the human body can do and how do we practice those skills and improve them? And there's this hardcore grit element that I love too. When I think about our modern world, everything seems backwards. It's designed for efficiency, it's designed for productivity, but it's not always designed for the human body. Materials like concrete and metal require that we arm ourselves with shoes and cars. And so we have to practice movement. We have to return to our roots. We have to go out of our way to go for a run or a walk, to go to the gym, to lift something, to climb something. And that's the process I fell in love with. Trying and failing, learning and growing, and breathing. I love movement. I love the elevated heart rate. I love the soreness in my legs. It makes me feel like I'm reconnecting with some deeper purpose. And over time, I get stronger. and I get faster. And I get fitter. And I become more human. So here I am, now having graduated college, and I'm looking back and I'm thinking, where, where did I lose this? Why was this gone from my life for so long? I was an emotional and nerdy kid, but something about running allowed me to shut my brain off. If I could just endure it, if I could grin and bear it, I could make it through. One day I hit a six minute mile, I went to sleep and the next day I couldn't do it, uh, which makes sense because I was tired, underfed. So I ran a 12 minute mile and I thought that meant that I was just not good enough. And I didn't run for a while, which is okay. It makes sense when you're a kid, you quit stuff, but um... Steve Jobs used to say that you can't connect the dots looking forwards. You can only connect them looking backwards. So I went back to my first athletic hobby, which was cross country out of practice, and a few pounds heavier. We'll be back for more, uh, just the beginning. Beating my old time doesn't just mean I need to become a better runner, it also means I need a little bit of help from my friends. What I noticed is like the differing factor between me and those like I competed with was an ability to focus, to, to turn everything else off, 
only worry about the task at hand. There is no silver bullet. CrossFit's not the answer for the, the best health. Powerlifting's not the answer for the best strength. What is the best answer is like what is fun and engaging is going to keep people coming. If the only movement that you have is like walking from your house to your car, from your car to your office, then I think we're going to have issues, whether that manifests itself physically, disease or illness, or that manifests itself in your mind and we're looking at like anxiety or depression. At any given point, you have so much fitness and you have so much fatigue. We want to use that fitness knowing that it's going to put us in a fatigue state. So if you come into the gym on Monday and you do a super hardcore intense workout, you come in sore the next day, willpower will lead you through another workout, but physiologically you will not have the same amount of intensity you had the day before. Dividing work and rest was everything that I was missing when I started out. And if I had known that before, maybe I wouldn't have given up so easily. Push your body. To push your limitations. Oh, to become what you're intended to be. And just to sweat a little. After work one day, I ran six miles on accident. I think I've been running since. A lot more running in the last year than the first 25, 26 years of my life. It's been therapeutic for the soul, for the mind, and a good place to uh, pray. Melvin was actually my youth pastor when I was a freshman in high school. We did some photography together, and he even officiated my wedding. Is the linchpin for phase four. For Melvin, running is a peaceful, prayerful process. I go back to this image of what I read in the first page of the Bible. Humans, amongst the trees, amongst the garden, and I don't, I, I don't imagine it being laborious. Because I have four kids, I, there's always a lot of chaos around me and, and it's hard to get in one mindset with, with my creator, but running, I'm, I'm able to do that. As much stuff that as I've experienced here over the last year to two years, I just need to take that next step. Running has symbolized that for me, is just take that next step. I'm done with the apple, so I'm not going to pretend I'm eating the corn now. From Melvin, I learned to be communing with God always and to just take that next step. Four, three, two, one. You decide how fast you go today. How much you want to give. Yeah, once I ride, everything feels 10 million, million times better. My very first cycling class was at a Soul Cycle, and I cried. Literally was like in tears. He said something along the lines of being selfish for yourself, showing up for you, and doing what you need to for yourself. I mean, I literally left that class like, thank you so much, like snot everywhere. At that point in my life, there was just so much going on, I think, that I just, I needed somebody to remind me of what I needed to do for me. We're here, we're working. That's it. Jessica's story encouraged me to take action, but I was still afraid. What if I couldn't beat my old time, no matter how hard I tried? When I first started, it was very numbers-based. This mileage and this time, then that was success, and if I didn't, I would just dog myself. I realized very quickly that that's not sustainable. I would lose track of what I was doing and then I started running three, four, five, six miles at a time and just getting lost in my thoughts and the scenery and watch the birds fly and things like that. And that's when I re-fell in love with it. Jacob considers himself to be a hybrid athlete and he hopes to own his own gym one day. He reminded me to keep a beginner's mentality and enjoy the process. I do think it's super important and super essential for every human to be moving in some capacity. When Jacob and I worked out together, we tried really hard to just chase the feeling, to enjoy what we were doing. Many people say that life has a rhythm to it, that there are seasons, that there are tempos that you might settle in on. 
I want to go big picture on this idea. So let's take a left turn for just a second. Hold on, hold on. We're starting fresh. So let's start you with the... Uh... Tapping on enough tables and everything, walls. The parents bought me a drum set at a pretty young age. I was like five or so. Tapping on desks, tables, rhythm flowing through me. You get your whole body moving, you know, it's, you just get lost in the drumming. After giving up on exercise, I tried a few different hobbies. Dylan and I were in a band together for two years, all about complete freedom of expression. All you have to do to see how music and movement are connected is check your pulse. There's a natural rhythm to what our bodies do, and it's our purpose to express it. With all of this advice in mind, I was almost ready to try for that six minute mile again but something about it felt impossible. The last person I met with helped me understand that sometimes the obstacles aren't just physical. Weightlifting is a mental game. You are only as strong with a barbell in your hands as you are in between your ears. I'm an EMT, so I have to pick up patients, and it's about making sure I'm set so I can lift a stretcher or pick up a patient or something like that. We are actually coming up on four years since my younger sister, Caroline, passed away in a freak accident involving a car. Stuff got dark, man. I was, uh, I was, I felt really guilty. It takes a tremendous amount of focus, a tremendous amount of patience and discipline to kind of put some of those demons and stuff to the side or just face them head on and overcome them with the barbell. Brady recently got level two certified in CrossFit. So we spent a little bit of time on my snatch technique, but ultimately Brady taught me that weightlifting is about overcoming. And so is fitness in general. If you can put your mind to it, you can move past whatever's holding you back and step forward. With this in mind, it was time to overcome what had been holding me back for so long. Crazy. Legitimately crazy.